Happy Sabbath, everyone. Only heard one-sided. Look like we are just few here, but we are greater in number. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Much better. Praise the Lord. Before I go, and I would like for us to bow our heads in prayer, please. Our kind and loving Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come to you at this, our Lord, as we are. I know we are not even worthy to stand before your throne of grace. Father, as I stand here, not because of my righteousness, I am a man with unclean lips, Lord. I am the chief of all sinners, made saved by your grace, my Lord and everlasting portion. I surrender myself, Lord, and say, Lord, use me as your instrument. Use my vocal cord this hour, Lord. May every word that will come out of my mouth, Jehovah, be blessed by thee to bless your people. Father, we are those that are called by your holy name. You said if we can only humble ourselves and pray. Lord, you said you, you promised you will heal the land. You said you will bless each and every one of us. You said you will heal all our diseases, all infirmities afflicting us, Father. You will also break down the yoke of the enemy, Lord, in our midst. Jehovah said, thank you. Bless your people this hour, Lord, for the hour has come. May your name and name alone be glorified in the mighty name of the Father and of the Son and Holy Spirit. And let the church say, Amen. My text today is taken from the book of Exodus 17, verse 18 and 13. And the title of my message says, Someone touched heaven for me. May I ask, is there anyone among us here that have served in the military? Two people, praise the Lord. Shall we say amen? Amen. So the book of Exodus talked about the prophet, great prophet Moses. And Israel. So, from verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose you up main and go out to fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua and Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ho went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, the Israel prevailed. And when he laid down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on thereof. And Aaron and Hall stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Verse 13 says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek, and his people with the age of the sword. Who was this Amalek? Amalek was the great grandson of Esau. The war Esau and his brother Jacob did not fight against one another. Even though they were great enemies. But Jacob feared that his brother will kill him because of his deceit. And he prayed and asked the Lord, if thou, Lord, will lead me to return to my father's house in peace. You gave me, give me bread to eat, water to drink, and clothes to wear. You shall be my God forever. I will always praise you. And God heard him. And kept 
the promise that he made to Abraham and to his descendants. I read a story that happened during the Civil War. An officer one day reported to his general, he said, that was at night, he said, that's unusual noise in the camp, in the tent. That some soldiers were making a lot of noise in their red tent. The general asked, what are they doing? He said, now they are singing. They are, it looked like they are singing a hymn. He said, well, is it a crime that they should be singing song and praying? The officer said, no, but uh, that's article of war ordering punishment for an unusual noise in the military camp. The general said, God forbid that praying should be unusual noise in the camp of the military. Praying should be an unusual noise in the camp, replied general, asking him, asking the officer. He didn't know what to say. Looked like he was caught off guard. Tried to condemn the military praying in their tent and singing praises unto God. These were men prepared for war. They know that the war is either kill, do, or die. And they decide to sing praises unto God that night. And decide to sing the face of God that night. The man who does not know God said that they're making unusual noise. He could not even recognize when people are praising God, seeking the face of God. So he tried to report them to his general. Maybe general will try to court martial them or say something, arrest them, or to stop them from singing and praising, praising God. But that general seemed to be somebody who is acquainted with God Almighty, that knows God and knows what he's about. She made it clear that it's a privilege for these soldiers to be praying and singing to glorify God Almighty. That privilege is something that somebody will gain access to the presence of God. Presenting somebody you don't even know. Presenting yourself before God Almighty. Praising him and thanking him for what he has done and what he's about to do for you. Maybe there's a soldier there who has a family. His family praying for him to go in peace and return in peace. Even though it's wartime to be killed, to kill or to be killed. Who knows what will happen? The book of Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, The Lord promised, call unto me, I will answer thee, and show you greater things, mighty things which thou knowest not. That's a promise of God. The same prophet Jeremiah 32 verse 27 said, Behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Who is this God that says, Call unto me, I will answer thee in the time of your trouble. I also made it clear that he is the Lord of all flesh. Is there anything hard for him to do? Have you ever doubted God? Have you ever called on his name? If you were in Sabbath school this morning, the teacher was asking, Melody was asking, why do we have to worship God? Is it worthy to worship God? In your own life, maybe it's not worthy. Maybe in somebody's life, they know it's worthy to praise God, to worship him, that it's worthy to praise him. The same God asked Moses, he said, when you do bring my, my people from Egypt, Bring them onto this mountain place that they may serve him and worship him. Serving God and worshiping God is an essence of your life and my life. Why do we exist if we cannot recognize or acknowledge the presence of God in our lives or in our environment? If you cannot recognize that there is a God or maker of all things that says, I am God of all flesh. And his name is Jehovah God. His name is Rafi. His name is Aishadai. Jehovah, the maker of and finish of all things. The beginning and the end. 
Go to the general, go to the, any hospital, go to the wards, intensive care. You look around there. Maybe if you never recognize that's the God, maybe if you never recognize or remember that people suffering with all types of sickness and diseases, go there, some with even billions in the account, saying, Lord, if you can only spare me, let the money go. I don't care for money for worldly things anymore. People that are fighting for their life. If you don't remember that, look out. Go there, just pay a visit. Somebody will be beg- begging you, say, please pray for me. So that he can see or she can see the face of the Lord. Maybe through you, might be saved. Through you, sickness might go away. Around the world today, there are still many people trying to seek the face of the Lord. Even as we worship here, we are not here alone. Around the world today, today is the most controversial day around the world. We are set and we stop some people from going to church to worship, to seek his face. We are some people we want to go to worship God. Say, no, you're, you're tired. You know, you work hard all week. You're supposed to rest today. Yes, you're supposed to rest. But it's better you rest in this house of the Lord to seek his face. To sing praises unto his holy name. Yes, I want you to rest. Who are you resting with? Are you resting alone? Or the devil will have the opportunity to come and whisper to your ear. You don't have to worry. You're okay sitting in here. Even though you're not sick, the devil will make you sick. You play some laziness that day. May God forbid. Ask, it shall be given. And seek, you will find. There's no greater blessings to be able to enter God's presence on behalf of one another. Yes, God forbid I pray for others to be, to be a noise, ordinary noise. Because there are some people that don't believe in God. Not believe in the presence of God. Yes. There's a greater need today around the world for people to pray for one another. If you think that is not fact, ask somebody one day, would you like for me to pray for you? See what they will respond. Maybe few will say, no, I don't care about God. But the majority will say, please pray for me, for remembering me. It's called intercessory prayer. If you can pray for one another, pray for your sons and daughters. Pray for your family members, distance family members, even if they are not around you. God will use you to touch heaven for somebody. As we read here in the book of Exodus, there came a time when Israel needed somebody to touch heaven for them. Amalek, the great great grandson of Esau. When he, when Israel left Egypt, they waged war against Israel. But they want to destroy them. What their great grandfather Esau did not do to destroy Jacob. Out of the grace of God, Esau did not destroy Jacob. But now the greater grandson of Esau want to finish the work. Remember what, whom God has blessed, God has blessed him. Whom God has blessed, God has blessed her. If you are caused by God, God has caused you. And no reversal. Will Amalek su- survive this type of war? Moses said, Joshua... Go and prepare your people and choose the men of war. Tomorrow there will be a warfare. Go and battle out there with Amalek. I will go out with the rod of God and stand upon the hill and see what will happen. How did he acquire, acquire that rod of God? The same stuff he was using when he was a shepherd guy in media. That was the day God called him to leadership. When he saw the burning bush close to the mountain, Moses wondered, what kind of fire is that? Burning bush, the trees or the plants are not being consumed. 
He was attracted to that location. When he got closer, the Lord called him Moses. Called him by his name to take off his sandals because where he's standing is the holy ground. Our God is holy. If you do not know, try him. He will show you, he will tell you that he is the holy God. Sins cannot stand before the presence of God. Neither sinners. That is why Jesus died for you and died for me. That day Moses stood with that same rod that God converted to be, that staff God converted to be a rod when he said, put your staff on the floor, drop it. Moses dropped it and become serpent. Moses ran away from his own staff. God told him gently, take it by the tail. He touched the tail, lift it up, become the same staff. God has made it from staff to be a rod of God. It's no longer staff of Moses, but staff rod of God. With this rod, you can do wonders. You can go before the presence of Pharaoh and play his game. The game of Pharaoh is nothing but magic. Egypt was the land of magicians. And God wants to play their game. He said, when you go there, put your staff down, your rod down. See what it will be. And when he played that magic word, some people will say, why did God play magic? Remember, Egypt was a land of magicians. God wants to beat them in their own game. He said, put that throw down. It becomes serpent. Oh, Pharaoh went and called his magicians. They came and dropped their own snake everywhere. Then one by one, the snake of God swallowed them up. Could Pharaoh's magic do that? No. Could not do that. So, God beat them in their own game. Joshua stood on top of the hill that very day. Can you imagine somebody standing up and also raising up his hand, holding rod from dawn to dusk? Your hand will be weary and weak. So Aaron and Hall devised a way to be able to support Moses. Hold your brother's hand. They went on top of the hill and used stone. Make a seat for Moses. Moses started there holding the rod and they waging their two hands. As long as the hand raises up with that rod, Israel prevailed against Amalek and his people. From dawn to dusk, they continued to massacre them until they were totally defeated. So that was the day Israel needed somebody to stand between them and God, to touch heaven for them. Moses did that, the great prophet of God. Not only that, there was somebody else that called touch heaven for his people. That was the, the Apostle Paul. If you read the book of Thessalonians 5 verse 25, Paul was calling for brethren, come and pray for us. Remember us in your prayers. Thessalonians, he, they were all converted, became converted. And he was praying that the word of God will spread faster and faster. So that these new converters will be able to stand by faith to follow the word of God and believe in Jesus Christ. As he received the message that the word of God is spreading faster in that area. Paul was highly rejoiced and prayed, advised him to pray without ceasing. He said, in everything give thanks to God. And it is the will of God. And also advise them to quench not the spirit of God in them. That spirit of God in them is very powerful. Ask new converters. When somebody comes new to Jesus and says, I accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. They rejoice. Because they have been converted. Because they have been redeemed. They are no longer where they were. They are now a new converters. Now save spirit of God bubbling in you. The Holy Spirit teaching you now. Guiding you 
That's the time you can make a challenge. Or whatever you ask of God, God will do it for you. Even if you're receiving oppression from your family, say, why do you join the Christians? Why not remember to remain in your own faith? Call upon God. That's a challenge many people do face when they come near to God. When they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That faith, Apostle Paul ask you to pray for people in Thessalonians. For Lord in you is very powerful. We lead you in following Jesus to empty the kingdom of evil and fill up the kingdom of heaven. So my people, let's also remember that somebody else that stood up for people like me and you in the days of of your trouble. Abraham was a man of God, anointed. And God made him a promise to leave his father's house, to go to a land where he knew it not. When Abraham left, he left with his nephew, Lot. Lot departed, they divided the whatever, their, their area environment, said, go that side, I will go this way. Lot chose to go to Sodom. When Lot got to Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom became a city where he loved so dearly. And that city was filled with sin. After a while, God sent somebody, sent his angels to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And they said they cannot pass through without revealing it to this man of God. He called them. It's just like he forced them to come to his house and eat bread bread. He didn't even know that they were angels of God. He thought maybe they were merchants. And they came in. He was able to prepare food for them. And they ate. As they were about to depart, God urged them to reveal where their journey to Abraham. That they are going to Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it. Woo! Abraham was chilled because his nephew was living in that city. How could that city be destroyed? My Lord, if there were righteous people in that city, will you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? He said, no, we will not. But there are not that number in that city. He called different numbers until he got to 10. He said, what about if there are 10 people and righteous in that city, will you still destroy Sodom? But there are no 10 people righteous in the city. That was a chilling fact for Abraham. Counted, Lord has a wife. That's two. They have two unmarried daughters at home. That's two. Making how many? Four. They have also two married daughters in the city. That's how many? How many? Eight people. Now, remember the question that Abraham asked. If there are ten righteous people in that city... Will you still destroy Sodom or will you save Sodom? He said, we will save Sodom, but there are not ten people in that city. Now, let's assume Lord and his daughters were righteous before God. Now, eight people. Two more remaining. If Lord we are working hard to save souls, if Lord we are witnessing before others, don't you think it would have been possible for Lord to win two people from Sodom and Gomorrah to become righteous for the city to be saved on that day? My people, do you see why we have to wake up? We have to wake up to witness for the Lord, to be able to win a soul for the Lord, for the kingdom of God. Because the same question might be asked tomorrow, you might be the one. I might be the one. If there are 100 people in our vicinity, will the city be saved? The angels might say no. If there are 10 righteous people or 100 people, will you save them? Yes, we will. But there are no in that number you mentioned. Wouldn't it be sad if there are no righteous person among in the city that would be spared for the glory of God? Sodom was destroyed because there are no, only two people missing from the equation that Abraham asked. 
Lord, if there are ten people in that city, will you save them? Yes, we will. But there are no ten people. Lord and his family, there were eight. Now, ten people, two more people to be saved. Where are they? Lord was weighed on a balance that very day. Something missing. But because of the faith of Abraham, Lord and his household were asked to move out of the city. Yet the wife of Lord disobeyed the instruction given to them. He, she turned back. Turned back to the great wealth she left behind. Turned back because of the, of the worldly things she left behind. To see if the angels were lying. If truly that God is destroying that great city. What happened to her? The Bible says she turned a pillar of salt. Disobedient. Disobedient of the word of God. The great Samuel told Saul, he said, Obedience is better than sacrifice. Let us not forget that. That you have to obey the word of God. And in repentance, we have to obey the will of God and the word of God. When we are commanded to do something, please let us do it. When you are asked to do something for the Lord, please do it because you never know when you will be called. So you can be able to give your testimony. Yes, I led two people to Christ, Jesus, to be saved. I led thousands of people to Christ to be saved. I led millions of people to Christ to be saved. Even in your city, outside the city, or somewhere else. In going forward, there's somebody else that stood before his people and God. That was Hezekiah. Hezekiah stood before Israel so that Jerusalem would not be destroyed. When Sennacherib wrote a letter to go and deliver to Hezekiah and mocked his God, the God of heaven, the God of Israel, the Alpha and Omega, he said, your God will not save you. This time, Sennacherib is noted for destroying cities, kingdoms, and also destroying their gods. Destroying their gods because their gods were made of woods and stone. Their gods cannot even talk. Their gods cannot even stand like the God of Israel. Who chooses Israel as his own people? And made them a firm promise through Abraham. Because of God's mercy, he remembered the covenant between him and Abraham. And chose Moses to go and deliver his people from Egypt. When Hezekiah read the note of Sennacherib, he was perplexed. He was feared. He was afraid. What would he do? If he were to be his shoes, a man from Syria who had destroyed kingdoms, destroyed their gods, now he come to mock you and your God. But he made the right choice. Instead of standing on his own, he said, let me go and read the letter in the house of the Lord. He went to the house of the God, house of God to read the letter. He said, Lord, he prayed. He said, Lord, you have seen this man. He came here to mock you. He came here to destroy the, this great city. He wept, Hezekiah wept, so that the children of Israel will not be destroyed. Because if Sennacherib enters Jerusalem, that city will not be left alone, will not be left with no rock or no stone unturned on top of each other. Because of that, God said, I have heard you. I will show Sennacherib that he is the Lord of all lords and the creator of heaven and earth. Before him, there is no other God. After him, there is no other God. I am the one that brought the children of Israel out of the bondage. I heard their cries. So I will still hear, I heard the cries of your forefathers. I will still hear your own cry. Now, Sennacherib, according to the word of God, he said he would die in his own city. And his own people destroyed him. Even as they came out to camp against the children of Israel, the Bible said 185,000 Assyrian soldiers were slaughtered by the soldiers, by the soldiers of God. God is a God of war and God of peace, God of love and God of mercy. Which way do you want it? You want to fight with God? You want to have peace with God? Whichever you want it, he will give it to you. 
No matter how tall we are, my people. No matter how big, how wealthy we are, my people. No matter how small we are. Let us humble ourselves before God Almighty. He said, when you humble yourself, I will raise you up. Out of the doors, I will raise you up to become somebody. From nobody. If you lift yourself up, God will betray you, dethrone you down. Our God search it in your heart and know what you mean. God does not search your pocket or your wealth. Just like David, when David sinned, he said, David is a man after my own heart. David knew he sinned gravely against God of Israel, God of heaven, that sees every secret thing we do. He sent Jonathan, Nathan, to go to David. Tell him what he has done wrong. The moment, and David has said, any person that could do that, okay, we will destroy him. I will do this, I'll do that. Nathan said, it's you, David. You are the one that did it. This is what you did. David, pap, went down on the floor. Weeping and repenting. Asking for mercy. Asking God not to take away the spirit of God, his spirit from him. He knew what happened to Saul. When the Lord removed his spirit from Saul, Saul became insane. Some became envious of David. If the Lord removed David's spirit, the spirit of God from David, what would be? He would be nothing from king, kingship to ordinary peasant. He knew what God is able to do. And he knew how God has blessed him in a mighty way. Because of that, he repented. My people, let us repent. And call and seek the face of God so that our God will not depose us. If God depose you, you will be nobody. I will be nobody. Let's humble ourselves and pray and seek his face. Yes, Lord. He's a mighty God. My people, what happened to Jesus? What happened to Jesus? Why was he here? Why did he come when he came? When we are loving others, when we say we care for one another, and yet, when we see the truth, we hide it from them. Do we still love them? My brother back there in the Sabbath school answered that question this morning. If you like somebody, show them the way to the truth. If you hide the truth from them, from loving, knowing who God is, you don't love them. You are destroying them. And God will hold you accountable. If you fail to reach out to touch somebody, to touch heaven for somebody, and you know your neighbor needs prayers, even when we pray or stand beside the city corner singing praises unto the Lord, trying to witness, maybe this, maybe the, the authority will say, no, you don't have no permit, you don't have no license to come and sing over here or to witness. You've done your part. That's one thing they cannot stop. When you go to your inner chamber and pray for the sinners, Prayer is like a wave, electronic wave, that goes directly to God, through Jesus, to Almighty. To touch heaven for them, for the sinners. No authority can stop that. Nobody, no king, no man, no woman, can stop you from praying, intercessory prayer from your inner chamber. You're praying for a city to be saved. You pray for a nation to be saved. You may not be visible, but nobody can stop you when you stay in your inner chamber and pray. Pray and seek the face of the Lord and touch heaven for your people. God will hear you. Our Savior came to this world. He has no place to dwell. He prayed and prayed in Gethsemane. When the anguish of life came closer to him. The pain of what he's going to go through. He 
he took three of his disciples to go and pray at Gethsemane. What did they do? Before Jesus came out, they were sleeping. Sleeping giants. You see, this is how the devil deceived each and every one of us. Even when message is going on in the house of the Lord. To prepare our hearts. To lift us up before the throne of grace. The devil will wave hands. Let some of you start sleeping. People will f- start falling asleep. I miss that message of good hope that day. These three disciples start sleeping. My God. They could not make that sacrifice to watch and pray with Jesus in support of what he's going through. Because they didn't understand exactly what Jesus is about to go through. They said, well, he's the son of God. If they come to touch him, he will disappear. That was not the mission of Jesus, to disappear. His mission was to go through the ordeal of sacrifice. His father sent him, go, you can do it. Even when he asked, Lord, if it's your will, let this cup pass me by. Do you know Jesus could not do it? Do you know God cannot do it? Let that cup pass him by. The host of the angels of heaven were waiting for God to give them command to go down and rescue his son. If we come to be a battle of kill. God has given him to go and die for you and die for me. Can you not even watch and pray with me for one hour? One hour, Jesus demanded of his two, three disciples. He went back to pray again. Where Jesus knew they were tired, that's true. They were human, that's true. They have their faults, that's true. Time comes when we have to stand firmly and make sacrifice, my people. Make sacrifice like praying all night. Having a Saturday night to pray for one another. To pray for the church of God. To pray for Sabbath school teachers. To pray for pastors of the conference. To pray for those that are in the field working. To pray for missionaries around the world. To pray for those that are within their nativity praying and witnessing for, for the Lord Jesus Christ. To fill the kingdom of God and take people, save people from hell. Thank Jesus. When Jesus hung himself on the cross... He was not forced to die. He gave his life. Because no soldier could could even stand the mighty power of Jesus Christ. How about God himself? I'm grateful the day Jesus gave his life on the cross for you and for me. So that he will die And take your weakness. Take your unholiness. Take your sinfulness. Take your your whatever. Stopping you from standing firmly to serve God. Whatever made Peter to deny him when they say, "Ah, you look like one of them. One of his followers. Peter denounced Jesus. Said, no, I am not one of them. Beforehand, Jesus had already warned Peter and said, Peter, Satan is about to sift you like wheat. But I know you will repent. You come to your senses. But when you become strengthened, Peter, strengthen your brethren. Jesus didn't tell Peter, when you become strengthened, run away from your people. Because there are still weak people among the disciples of Jesus Christ. He said, when you are strengthened, Peter, strengthen your brethren. It's our responsibility to strengthen one another, to pray for one another. You look around. John didn't come to church today. Mary didn't come to church today. Sister Betty didn't come to church today. It's our responsibility to call 
You don't wait for the elders only. You don't wait for the deaconesses only. You don't wait for the deacons only. God just one single phone. Sister, is everything all right with you? We miss you today. Nobody from your household came to church today. Already you have prayed. You also pray one again with her, with him. You know something is happening. Why they fail to come to the house of the Lord to worship. If we can remember that, to touch heaven for one another. Yes. Jesus will love that. Heaven will love it. Even if they are across the nation, if you know how to reach them, reach out and touch them. Jesus was tormented heavily. So that we may have his righteousness. That you may have his glory. That you may live in peace and love one another and do that which he has prepared for us. There was a woman in England. He asked Queen Elizabeth something. Queen asked him, when will you stop begging? He said, when the queen stop giving, then I will stop begging. Our God has never stopped giving. It's we that stop begging. We will not really guard from begging, from asking. He said, ask, you shall receive. Knock, you will be opened for you. These are promises God made unto you and unto me. Sometimes, many times in our lives, we forget to, to ask God. We, we, we went back, uh, tried to seclude ourselves in isolation, trying to count uh, who has offended me? Who has offended you? Try to count how this person looked at you at church today with bad eyes. Satan will always point at eyes that doesn't like you or doesn't love you. Satan will always show you something you don't want to hear. Make you to be against one another. This is where devil gets each and every one of us. Trying to knock heads together. You say, oh, that's your church member. Did she call you today? Did he talk to you? Did he greet at church? Didn't you see how she looked at you? Didn't you see how he looked at you? Children of God, let us look at the cross. Once you open that door, look towards here. Here, this invisible cross on this pulpit, on this altar of God. This sanctuary was built many years ago that whenever we have problem, come in here and worship and ask God for our needs. God is able to supply your needs, my people. Stop looking at each other's face and counting whether he or she like you or not. Did Jesus love you? Yes, Jesus loves you. If Jesus doesn't love you, he will not die on the cross. He will not give heaven for nothing. Remember, we have to give up something on earth for heaven to give up something. Heaven gave up Jesus to come here and die for you. Intercessory prayer is something that you will never fail to do. As a servant of God, that's another story I read about a soldier serving during the Second World War in South Pacific. One day the war was so great their target was to capture a particular hill. People were dying left and right. The sniper was there taking them away. And they get to a point close to that hill. The sergeant said, who will go up there and raise up American flag on that pole? So that they will know, others will live behind, we know that we have captured this area. A soldier volunteered to come out. He came out of his foxhole and ran to the hill. Sniper got him, smashed him to pieces. And that soldier died. Sergeant called for another soldier. He said, get that flag and rise it up there. Somebody took off from his foxhole, ran to retrieve the flag. Sniper was there. Got him also. Two soldiers down. Sergeant called for the third person. I want that flag up. 
That's a rule I heard about the soldier said, obey before complain. Soldier, you know about that. Sergeant has given order. He wants somebody to go there and raise the flag up. A private said, Sergeant, I will go and raise that flag up. If you can only give me 15 more minutes, give me 15 more minutes, I will go and raise that flag up. Sergeant was thinking, what does that 15 minutes mean to him? Private, instead of going up to do what I ask you to do, say, Sergeant, I beg of you, just give me 15 more minutes. That's all I'm asking for. You want that flag up? I will raise it up. Clock was ticking, tickling, tickling until 15 minutes passed. 15 minutes, at the point of 15 minutes, that soldier came out of his foxhole, ran to the hill, grabbed that flag, retrieved it, raised it up, ran back to his foxhole. They were all clapping hands. He became a hero. Sergeant called to order. When everything said to say, son, tell me, when I gave you order today, you said 15 more minutes. What do you mean by 15 more minutes? He said, Sergeant, when it was 15 minutes here, 15 minutes, it was 15 minutes to 4 o'clock. I was checking my time. And when it's 4 o'clock, it's 6 a.m. where I came from in America. 4 O'clock here, it's six o'clock. There. And my father, my mother, and everyone in our household are on their knees praying. And they told me, when it's that time, six o'clock, the Lord will look after you. Do whatever you want to do at that time. The Lord will save you. So his family touched heaven that day. For his glory. They touched heaven for this private. They were praying intercessory prayer. Somebody way, way out in the Pacific area. He was able to raise that flag. He said, I know my papa and my mama will not lie to me. They were touching heaven for me at that six o'clock in the morning. And I, by faith I believe it. Sergeant, that is my secret. Everyone marveled. My question today. How many 15 minutes have you spent with your God in prayers? That when you kneel, Satan will remind you that you have not called John. You're, supposed, you're running late. You must do this. You must do that. You get up with one minute. Bam, you're gone. How many 15 minutes have you spent with somebody sick in the hospital? Or at their home, visiting, at your own spare time? We are all guilty with that. How many 15 minutes that you spent for the glory of God? That guy gave his testimony that day because of what his parents told him. Fear not. The God of hosts is with you. At 6 a.m. in the morning, we'll be touching heaven for you. And the Lord will hear, hear us. By faith, he will save you and bring you back home safely. War is kill or die. My people. We perish because we do not do what God has already, Jesus told us to do. Pray without ceasing. He told his disciples at Gethsemane, pray without ceasing. Jesus knew what the deal he was going through. He was going to face. He prayed without ceasing. He prayed and prayed. And asked, can you watch with me? Observe with me for one hour and pray. The more we pray, the more power. The less we pray, the less power. That is where the devil gets every body that said, I believe in God. The devil will fear you. Even the devil, a man possessed, he said, Peter, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? If you are a prayerful person, he wouldn't say, who are you? He will know that you are being sheltered by the wings of God. That Jesus is sheltering you. The blood of Jesus is the most powerful thing you can think of. We cannot say we are Christians, we cannot be able to pray. We cannot say we, cannot, we are Christians, we cannot intercede for one another. For our brethren, working in the field, for our family members, even 
for our enemies sometimes. You pray for them, they will come and embrace you. Your enemies don't bickering behind you say that when they see you, they will squeeze you, they will break you, they will do this and do that. I have some, had some testimonies. Because of prayer, God neutralized their wicked hearts from harming you. I'm not saying you should see a snake and go and tamper with it or put your hand there. God told Moses, take it by the tail. Moses obeyed. When we see evil, stay away from the way of evil. But don't forget to speak out about evil or testify of the goodness of the Lord. Christian friends, let's speak out about the goodness of the Lord. The minutes we spend with the Lord is not in vain. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Matthew 26, verse 38, My soul is very sorrowful, even to date. He said to them, remain here and watch with me. When Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was the pain of sinners that Jesus was going through. The pain sinners will go through. The pain I and you should go through. Jesus was going through that process at that time. He cried out, my Lord and my God, why have you forsaken me? There comes a time when you cry out, Lord, why me? Remember, Jesus had already cried that cry before you. I went through the same process. The Lord is able to redeem you. I don't know the crucial pain you're going through today. Crucial pain of sickness. Crucial pain of lack of finances. Crucial pain of, uh, of, of jobs uh, and any other thing. The Lord sees it all. But I pray and declare and declare this time that the Lord God will meet you at the point of your need. At the cross where Jesus died for you, he will remember you. At 6 a.m. when you pray, at noon when you pray, at midnight when you pray, the Lord hears each and every one of us. And we meet us at the point of our need. Remember, if we don't speak out, we are closing our own destiny. When we open our mouth to pray and ask the Lord forward our needs before him, he's willing and able to hear you. No matter where you come from, no matter where, whether you're tall or short or, 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 or light or dark or skin or whatever you, you're doing for your, for, your, for, for, for your living, only remember the glory of God is able for you and for me. Give him the glory. No matter how much achievement you have acquired, no matter how much wealth you have acquired in this world, remember, everything will pass away. The only thing that will not pass away is the word of God. The word of God said it will be better for heaven and earth to pass away than his own word. Our Lord is not man that he can lie to you. He's not a man. He cannot lie. He's God that created himself. He's God that lived himself. The God, of all, the God Almighty that created heaven and earth. The God Almighty that said, call upon me, I will answer you. He will never fail you. He never fail anyone that believes in him. He never fail anyone that trusts in him. Yes, my people, remember him. At this hour, I'm using this opportunity to call. Is there anyone here? who has never accepted Jesus as his Lord or his Savior, please come forward that we pray together and today to accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, to remember to be a part of the glory of God, the kingdom of God, and to be able to witness for him and be able to keep people away from, from hell, to stand between people, sinners, and hell and say, come back this way. This is the right path to go. Is there anyone here today? Please come forward. Don't be shy. Is there anyone? To God be the glory. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this may be the only call you get today. The call you may get again. You might be asking, Lord, I am back. Praise the Lord. My people, remember, Prayers is the key to serve God. May God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name.
Amen.